Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. So, is there any you maybe you, oh, you is the first for you to know about Brazil? For me, yes. It's the first time. Oh, so, where do you know Brazil? Um suddenly uh uh apa ya? Um, I just think about that I want to join an English community that is active uh, in speaking. So that's why I'm just typing it on Instagram and uh, I type English, such English community or English club. So I find this red zone. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy this class today. Okay, nice to see you here, Fahra. Okay, so without further ado, um, I'm sure you are all excited and eager to learn from our conductor. And do you know about the topic for today? Anyone know? It's about feminism. Okay, so, so I'm sure you've got your pen and paper ready for today. And also, don't forget to have fun for today's class. And first, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Brizong, like Fahra here, or maybe more, or maybe you want to invite your friends to be here, and there will be a brief explanation about Brazil. Wait a sec, I will share my screen. Okay, so how can I share my screen? Um, Amanda, would you please make okay. me a call? Uh, let me help you Kat, to share the screen. Thank you then, Amanda. Okay, is it visible now, guys? Yeah, sure. Yes, okay, thank you for your response. Okay, so welcome to the largest English community in Indonesia. And we have three core pillars here. Brazil is free and open platform, so no matter your accent, no matter your grammar, or no matter if you are a beginner in English or an advanced learner, just come here. Feel free to come here, and no matter how old you are, please feel free to come here. And on volunteerism so our conductor here and also like our committee our facilitator is also a volunteer and yes we are focused on the english education that's right like fahra just already said okay next please manda hello okay so we have three classes. The first is BSA, Osborne Brazilian Speaking Academy. So it starts at 7 p.m. like today, it's Tuesday. And as you already know, speaking, we focus on the speaking, such as speech, debate, interview, and etc. Next, please. And then BEBS or Betterment Series. It starts tomorrow at Wednesday and the same time, touch four skills in English listening, reading, writing, and also speaking. Next, please. And that last in the week is a Saturday class, Brisbane Fun Day class starts at 11 a.m. and it will bring various fun topics to discuss. So please have fun in the print zone. Next, please. Okay, you can keep yourself updated with us 
to con uh, to keep us contact in social media like Instagram at Dream ID and YouTube. You can also watch our class in YouTube, Bridgetown English Community, and Twitter at Bridgetown ID. Also, in the Clubhouse, Bridgetown English Community, and also in website, www.bridgetown.id, and also on Spotify, Bridgetown's Podcast. Next, please. Okay, as uh, because we are a non-profit organization, so we encourage you to support us by uh, purchasing our merchandise. Brinson official merchandise in 2022, it is newly established and we offer so many cool stuff for you to have like t-shirt, Take her talk by contact Friska in here in the in the posters and then in Shopee and also on Instagram at Bridgeton March. Okay, next please. And then we are our loyal sponsor is Good. So sign up for becoming member. So you have access to massive impressive resources like book collection, audio, and also video. Next, please. Okay, and then we have after class tradition, but in here, the taking pictures is in the middle before mm -hmm. you going to open in the breakout rooms. So don't forget to give us your feedback. And then for taking pictures, you can like opening up your camera. Is it possible for you? And the feedback link will be in the WhatsApp. Okay. Is it, is it already? Okay, yeah. Okay, so as, uh, so this month already like, our explanation about Britain. All right, let us first proceed to the presentation. I like to start start by greeting our conductor. Hello, Kavivi. Hi. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Hi, Sophia. How are you today? Hi. Thank you, Ka. I'm great. Awesome. Thanks for asking. How about you, Ka? A little bit tired. <laughs> I have a lot of meetings today and I also I already did like maybe three trainings for the whole day on sexual harassment. I'm actually in Pekanbaru right now um, doing training with the Gojek drivers, uh, providing them more information in terms of what kind of what are sexual violence and how to identify them and all of that and then also train them to be able to intervene when they see something is happening surrounding them. So it's been a long day. But I'm so happy wow. that I'm here right now with all of you. Wow, awesome. God. By the way, this evening conductors is my seniors, whom I delight delighted to introduce to you today. And she is currently program director at Jakarta Feminist. And she is also an enthusiastic public speaker as evidenced by her numerous model United Nations awards both national and international and also a speaker in countless events seminars and she is originally comes from Samara so without further ado let's hand it over to her and give it up for Kak Vivi Kak the screen is yours Thank you so much and such a lovely introduction. Um, hi, I just want to say hi one more time. Good evening. My name is Vivi. I am currently work as a program director for a nonprofit uh, community and also organizations that I think mostly known as Jakarta Feminists on Instagram, on social media. It's all over social media. You probably heard it. And if you haven't, this is the right time for you to get to know our organization. But I think today, I think what I wanted to kind of discuss with all of you, it's more on, you know, discussing the 
the, the newest F word, <laughs> which is feminism. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, you know, like a lot of people like have like their own misconception when, when it comes to talking about feminism, about, you know, feminists in general, like me and the rest of my fellow feminist friends. Um, I am a proud feminist from Indonesia, and I think there are a lot of horrible stereotypes that is attached uh, to feminists, especially when you are in Indonesia. So I think right now what I want to kind of share with you is hopefully it will be able to kind of debunk all of that stereotype and also myth, not just surrounding feminist as an individual, but also as an ideology and also as a movement in Indonesia. And I think a lot of people have their own certain mindset in terms of what feminist looks like. And they look very diverse. I'm just gonna start by sharing my screen right now. And maybe before, uh, can you see my screen right now? I think so, right? So I'm just gonna start this slide. So I think before we start talking about what or how feminist movement in Indonesia has been going on for many, many years. This isn't actually something new in Indonesia. That's also something that I just would like to clarify. Feminism has been in Indonesia for a very long time. But I think before we dig deeper into that, I just want to have like a conversation with everyone by asking what will be the most, I don't know, like famous stereotype that you've ever heard about feminists or feminism. You can just type it on the chat if you're not comfortable like talking on the microphone. Is there any, you know, like stereotype or assumption when you hear the word feminist or feminism? Like I'm just gonna give an example. A lot of people call me social justice warrior or on Twitter, you've probably seen that a lot. Um, or a lot of people think that I hate men. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> a lot of stereotypes yeah, like about I'm a man, feminist I'm a and man hater yes um, right. that's also another stereotype that I've heard a lot a lot of people also think that I am a lesbian yeah so that's also something that people always kind of like if you're a feminist then you must be a lesbian or mm -hmm. some other people also mention that um, aside of hating men, we we hate or we don't want to get married. <laughs> and like stuff like that. You're anti-marriage and all of that stuff. So those are a lot of stereotypes that you've probably heard about feminist or feminism in general. And I think for me, I think and especially recently, we've seen a lot of discussions and within not only in social media, even on a daily basis, not only when we're talking about feminism, you know, not have to be like specifically attached to feminism itself. One of the biggest misconceptions in Indonesia is that people believe that this concept of gender equality or the concept of feminist value itself came from the Western world. That's why this is not in line with Indonesia, who has like quote unquote Eastern values. But I think contrary to that belief or to that misconceptions, many Indonesian culture is actually deeply rooted with feminist value. Saying that, it does not mean that maybe in the ancient world, we already use the terminology of feminism, but it's more on the value is there, but we just don't call it feminism. You know, like because feminism is an ideology that first being, I don't know, mentioned by Simone de Beauvoir, which is like this, um, you know, like um, sociologist from France who basically token the word feminism, which is a, a value or an ideology that looking at the issues on how women are most of the time being considered as the second sex. And in Indonesia, I think a lot of people, when you're talking about feminism or gender equality, you know, like a um, role model, the first thing that popped into your mind is definitely Kartini, right? So there will be like, oh, who is the feminist icon in Indonesia? People will say like, oh, it's Kartini, 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 Kartini. However, there are so many, many feminist icons in Indonesia that already passed away, that live in the past, or even still live right now, and fighting for the value 
that we have been fighting for. So if you take a look at the photos that I put here, like a nice college of like this feminist icon, is there anybody here that you probably know who that is in that picture? Is there anyone that you recognize? The girl in the in the hijab. It's uh, I I I just remember the daughter of the blind woman. Is it right, Kat? I'm not sure if she's the daughter of a blind woman. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know. But like, she is also like a very amazing icon in terms of she is the first professor and the first doc, the first female professor in Indonesia. Uh, who is from Universitas Gajah Mada. Her name is Siti Baroroh Bari. So, and then the woman who, was, who, who has this nice picture sitting on top of a cliff, this is Mama Aleta Baun. She is, uh, she fight for uh, land uh, freedom in her own village in Molo, in Timor. Uh, who like she woven like her activism I, I'm, I'm going to explain it on in, in terms of history of feminism as well like she is an we call it eco-feminist which means a uh, feminist who are also uh, interlining um environmental rights and also women's rights which is something that most of the time people don't see that it's interlining but it is interlining and the one on the bottom which the one who's wearing hijab is uh, Musda Mulia she is a female like a Clark, like a kiai, but like a female Ustaza, who is like who has like a very progressive view of Islam, and this is where she actually plays such a big role in terms of people always talking about how feminism is not related to or, or it's very contrast to if you're a religious person that it could be, that you couldn't not be feminist, especially if you're a Muslim. But she actually able to kind of give like a conversational level in terms of how Islam is actually a feminist religion. And then in the middle is actually Marsina. You probably heard her name every time we have a labor rights movement. Her name is always there. She is a labor rights movement activist who were unfortunately was sexually assaulted and also killed during a new order or during Suharto era because she was protesting on behalf of, you know, like a, you know, like labor rights movement. Um, and then the one with glasses was like a very edgy style. This is actually also my mentor. Her name is Mbak Dita Chaturani. She was also actually an activist during Reformation era in 1998 that she was actually getting shot when she was protesting in front of the House of Representatives. Right now, Mbak Dita mostly working on feminist rights on the internet. So if you take a look at all of these people, they work in so much, you know, like a very diverse, you know, um, topics and also issue within Indonesia and probably beyond Indonesia, right? So it's so it means that when you're talking about feminism, you're not only talking about gender. You're not talking about just women and, you know, like you know, uh, or maybe like other issues that is or gender based violence and all of that. Despite that, all of the things that they are working on definitely has relations to gender, but it's beyond that. It's also talking about education. It's also talking about climate change. It talks about, you know, like, um, you know, your freedom being in a public space, not only in an offline or in-person public space, but also in an online settings like what we are doing right now. And also labor rights movement, when a lot of people like use, like when, when a lot, when this labor, labor are, you know, like doing demonstrations, people always say like, why are you, you know, like protesting and stuff like that, despite that uh, most of the rights that we actually have as an employee actually came because of the labor rights or especially women workers were actually protesting because of the horrible situations that they are actually facing within the workforce. So this is basically like, I just want to show you that when, when it comes to feminism, I know that some of you probably have the stereotype that feminists is like has a certain way of, you know, like looking, but we are very diverse. Like a lot of feminists are actually working on certain issues that people like could probably never think if this is actually a woman or feminist issue, but that's actually the beauty of feminism because it's intersectional. So we have this kind of idea in terms of we're not going to be free and I mean, like, I'm not, like, this is one of the quotes from my 
one of my favorite feminist icon in the world like she came from the US her name is Audrey Lord like she mentions that we will never be free unless uh, I mean like even if there's only one woman who is not free despite her shackles is very different on my own uh from my own so it means that like if we still see there are other people especially women or those who came from the marginalized group who are still being discriminated who are still being oppressed despite that i am as someone who has a lot of privileges free it means that i'm not free because there are still other people who is still in bondage and not in a literal way but you know what i mean so i'm just gonna also kind of give you like a little bit of background of history in terms of how feminist movement in Indonesia actually works from time to time. So on this picture, like you probably didn't notice, but actually this is a picture of Gerwani. <laughs> you probably also heard a lot of misconceptions about Gerwani and how they're being, you know, like being labeled as communist party and all of that. But actually Gerwani is actually a women's organization who are actually fighting for equality for most of the time are actually women's farmer. They are actually teaching women how to read, teaching women how to basically count so their family can get, you know, like because, you know, at that time they still have this kind of idea that women is the one who's taking care of the, the house economy and all of that. So they are actually teaching women on home economic and basically empowering all of this of uh, you know like female farmers within you know all around Indonesia so like yeah so basically that but they are somehow being framed and now being accused of like you know part of a communist party and actually they're when they are being political prisoner within the 1965 until later in the year they're still being labeled and they're actually being tortured and also sexually assaulted when they are in captive but let's go back beyond 1965. So one of the things that is a hot topic in Indonesia right now on Twitter is what happened in Universitas Hasanuddin when somebody said that when a student come out and said that they are a, you know, a non-binary and then he got expelled or they got expelled, sorry. I misgendered them. They got expelled. Uh, the problem is a lot of people say that this is not Indonesian culture. And it is quite sad that it happened in Universitas Hasanuddin when Bugis culture actually acknowledged five gender. So aside of the binary gender of women and men, or like female and male, they also acknowledge there are other three other genders that actually hold such an amazing power within their you know, culture, which is the Chalalai, Chalabai, and also Bisu. So Chalalai and Chalabai, I'm not quite sure in which which one is which, but two of them are actually transgender and also trans, a trans woman and also trans men. So those who are born with penis can actually identify themselves as a woman or the other way around, who actually born with vagina and uterus could identify themselves as men. And also Bisu, which means is the non-binary. And Bisu usually is basically being the the what is it called like a um like a not a person like a being that is being worshipped because they hold a certain power usually has something to do with healing people within their you know within their community so when people say that this is like non-binary is not indonesian culture but bugis culture actually acknowledge that isu is actually a gender like a non-binary is a gender and this is why when I was like, when it happened in the first class, I was just like, but Bugis is wrong. <laughs> you know, like that kind of, you know, situation. And I think it's just kind of, you know, it's just sad to see that people are arguing in that way without actually understanding that there's a very long culture and also history on how um, diverse gender is in Indonesia within our own roots and also culture. So it has nothing to do that this is a westernized idea because it has always been there. Actually, those who reduce the gender into two are actually those people who, those white people who came to this country and colonized us for a very long time. So they are not comfortable seeing how expressive we are in terms of our sexuality, our gender expressions, and that's why with colonialism, they imposed it, and here we are. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm not gonna, I don't have any more time in terms of talking to you in terms of how, you know, women leaders within Gajah Mada era or like Majapahit era was actually 
you know, fighting for or actually has like a equal positions um, within their, you know, their, their culture back then. But I can give you like a little sh- or like a short uh, uh, explanation in terms of how actually, especially within the past, maybe like 80 years or like 90 or 100 years, actually 100 years, it's 19, it's 2020. So yeah, 100 years back. So in 1920s, we have the first Congress from Puan Indonesia that is initiated in 1928 for the first time in Jakarta. And currently, every 22nd December is celebrated as National Women's Day in Indonesia. But we know it as Hari Ibu or Mother's Day. But originally, Hari Ibu is not only for mothers who gave birth, but actually Ibu translated as woman. Because this is to celebrate the first woman, Indonesian woman congress. But during the new order or the Suharto era, they switched it because they want women to be domesticated like a cat <laughs> uh you know like they want women to be domesticated they want women to have a certain role as a mothers and stuff like that that's why even during Artini celebration the way that we celebrated before it's so domesticated for women you have to learn how to like there's a competitions on cooking competitions on putting on makeup which we know that's not what Artini is fighting for so this is on how actually the new order era is trying to domesticate women. Even there is this one sociologist from Indonesia who wrote such a nice book that really opened my eyes that's called State of Ibuism or Negara Ibuisme, who actually explained on how new order is trying to domesticate women. Um, and then after 1920s, and then we have the 1950s when I mentioned about the Derwani, which is a, a you know, a prominent feminist group that work to fight for equal rights for women all over Indonesia. This is something that I already explained before, how they are framed being a communist and all of that. But yeah, that happened. Uh, unfortunately, after the, you know, the 1965, within the 1970s, up to 1980s, because of the new order era and on how the government at that time really trying to oppress everyone, including women, to not be able to kind of, you know, express themselves and stuff like that. It seems that feminist movement during those 10 or 20, 30 years is kind of like you muted. So it's very hard for us to kind of find research or any, you know, kind of, you know, sources in terms of what feminist movement looks like during those era. But in 1990s, the labor movement intensified with Marcina, the one that I showed you earlier on the first page, uh, as the prominent leader for women's labor movement uh, during New Order era is starting to have that kind of protest. That's why she is being killed, unfortunately. And then I think that actually led to a lot of anger, especially within the women movement. And when we are talking about reformations in Indonesia, most of the time we are focusing on the student movement. However, without, you know, diminishing the student movement itself, the reformation actually started with women protesting new order with Suara Ibu Peduli in the late 90s. So the Suara Ibu Peduli is actually a woman, there's a group of women feminist activists who are looking at how new order, trying so hard to domesticate women. However, it also, <laughs> excuse my French, fucked up in terms of, um, you know, like, dealing with our economy that it, that a lot of price went so high. There's like this crisis, this month, how we call it before, the monetary crisis, when even the price of baby formula is so high that women or mothers couldn't even afford it. So if you are forcing women to be a good mother, but you couldn't even provide nutrition for our kids, how can we, women, be a good mother. So this is the kind of narrative that Suara Ibu Peduli came and started the protests with the reformations. And then the student movement came, and then we have reformations. However, in the 1998s, we also know that there's a lot of genocide that happened, especially towards ethnic women, ethnic minority, especially within Indonesia, which is the Chinese Indonesian, when there's a lot of them being raped and killed during the 1998. And this is exactly why Komnas Perempuan or the National Commissions Against 
violence against on violence against women was actually initiated. They were initiated by President Habibi at the time, who is the only president who actually acknowledged there is a genocide that was happening during 1998. That 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 is how he was actually saying that like. All right, this group of women will be our fact-finding team. And this fact-finding team is now actually the one that we call it as Komnas Perempuan right now. So that is a very intense history of Indonesia during 1990s. And then during 2000, there's more and more movement. Jala PRT is an organization that are actually advocating for domestic workers, right? Uh, or we call it pekerja rumah tangga in Indonesia or domestic workers, who has been advocating for the law to protect domestic workers' rights for the past almost 20 years now. It's still like the draft bill right now. So they're fighting for the rights of domestic workers who most of the time are, you know, informal. They're, there's no contract. They are being abused a lot and there's no law that can protect them. So they're advocating for it. And then I mentioned about Mama Ale Tabaun, who is a leader of an indigenous group in Molo that protested against mining company by weaving. So the mining company is trying to kind of using their land, who's like the sacred land, to become a mine, to, to build a mine in there. And then Mama Aleta Baun decided, you know what? Let's just weave or menenun on this hill. So they couldn't pass us. So they, ha- they were weaving for, I don't know how many years, but it was a very long time until finally the mining company gave up. So that's how they are fighting. So if you also take a look at the pattern of the protest, it's very diverse, right? Like some people are protesting, literally going on the street. Some like Mama Ale Tabel with her own way, as an, the, the, own, the way that she knows an indigenous woman, as, as a leader of indigenous group, this is the way that she know on how protesting and how people will actually listen to her demand. And I think right now we come to the point where we are here. Um, which in 2010s and the 2020s, you see that there are more movements that are actually led by young people. One of them is the Women's March Jakarta or Women's March Indonesia that started in 2018 and until now. And I think right now, a lot of discussions surrounding sexuality are being included in the movement. But however, like I mentioned, when we're talking about feminism, it's intersectional. So there are other issues that we are also working on and they're still fighting as well as, for, for example, the indigenous women who are still fighting for their rights. One of them is shown by Karpini Kendeng, which is in Kendeng, um, in uh, Central Java, we're protesting against a man factory. If you probably heard or maybe you read the news around 2017, 2018, they're actually cementing their own key in front of the presidential palace and unfortunately one of them passed away during that time so yeah so this are like how this is definitely I mean I'm not going to say this is like the whole thing like there will be a lot more and especially those who actually came from like you know like other part of the Indonesia and I think each of feminists, each of feminist community have their own way in terms of advocating for their rights. But this is basically the general overview on how feminist movement in Indonesia came from time to time. But right now, let's, before we go to the discussion, I don't know how many more minutes to, that I have, but I think I just want to have a little short explanations in terms of what we are actually advocating right now. <laughs> so I think in general, <laughs> in terms of legal aspects. So when we're talking about advocacy, create, to reject, to refuse policy. The main goal is public policy, right? So in terms of a legal aspect, right now we are trying to legalize policies and law that protect women and marginalized groups in Indonesia. Like I mentioned, when we're talking about feminism, it's not just about women. We also talk about other about you know other identity who are considered as a marginalized group. So the first one is obviously the one that just passed at the beginning of this year, which is the Undang Undang Tindak Pidana Kekerasan Seksual, which is right now is the crime is the 
Undang-Undang Number 12 of 2022 on Criminal Act of Sexual Violence. We have been fighting for this for almost a decade. And also we have the Ministry of Education and Culture Regulations Number 30 of 2021 on Prevention and Handling Mechanism on Sexual Violence in Higher Education Institution or Permen 30 Tahun 2021. So like I mentioned as well, we are also in line with what Jala PRT is fighting for in terms of protections to domestic workers. So we are still fighting to legalize the draft bills on protections to domestic worker, or a lot of people call it RUU PPRT. And then with the indigenous rights, indigenous group, they also has been fighting for this law for a very long time on how to protect indigenous rights, including the collective knowledge of indigenous women. If you're talking about when I mentioned about collective knowledge, it includes on how many big brands all over the world has been using indigenous formula and patent them. So when indigenous people are working on that, they're actually suing this indigenous woman for like, you know, like creating something that is actually their formula for actually being patented by these big companies. So this is what, what I mentioned when we're actually trying to, you know, protect and collect knowledge of indigenous women. And of course, one of the most problematic law in Indonesia, which is the IPE law, which I feel that everybody, it's like a very, like, we call it asal karet, or like an elastic, you know, like, laws, because like, it could definitely, you know, hurting a lot of people, right? Everybody can be charged under IDE law. So we are have been advocating for the revisions of IDE law itself. And of course, there are other policies that we felt, um, you know, like that putting harms to women and marginalized group. And this is those are the policies that we are trying to reject. The first one is the penal code draft, which is rancangan Kitab Undang-Undang Hukum Pidana or the criminal code itself, the, the, the revisions of the criminal code. I'm not going to say that we are trying to reject this policy, but more into revising the policy to be able to kind of listen to what the civil society has been asking for. Like there are so many problematic and ridiculous articles, including giving fine to homeless people. So like if you are homeless, then I'm just going to fine you for a million rupiah. Like if they have a million rupiah, they won't, I don't think like they're probably going to spend it for, you know, housing, right? Not sleeping on the street. But yeah, that's just this one of the ridiculous, you know, like, law that is under the draft of the penal code or the criminal code and of course they we used to have the family resilience uh draft bill who is like very very um you know how do i say that's like most like likely or like women are being put like a very vulnerable situations of being criminalized because there are so many you know like a conditions or compulsory thing that women should do as quote unquote mother and also wife uh, and then third is the omnibus law. It is already passed, and of course, there's nothing that we cannot do about it anymore, outside of the appealing it to the the, um, the constitutional court. Uh, but yeah, but this is also one of the law that we rejected. And then of course, there are so many other law against sexual deviance or within the penal code is actually categorized as a living law, which is also something that is quite. Um, so yeah, those are the legal aspect. And the last bit is of course the non-legal aspect. When we are working on the non-legal aspect is mostly we are trying to fill in the gap of what government should be doing to protect women and also marginalized groups. By, for example, providing protection and services for women and marginalized group, groups, specifically on gender-based violence. We know that gender-based violence or sexual violence, sexual harassment in Indonesia is very rampant. And somehow we do not have like a centralized hotline for people to actually call and ask for help. And this is where civil society, especially feminist organization and also feminist individual even, who actually come or stepping in to basically providing all of these things that necessary to help all of this victim and survivors of gender-based violence. Of course, second is comprehensive education, information, and services to sexual and reproductive health and rights. It has a very strong correlations towards the issue of gender-based violence. That's why this is something that we are trying to working on, especially when we are talking about child and mother mortality, sexual and reproductive health and rights is also very, very connected to uh, this issue. And then the third one is also increasing women's and marginalized group representative in many sectors because we are know we understand there's so many things that is made 
without consultation <laughs> or was basically just made without understanding how a woman actually works. Even the policy itself, there's a lot of policy that actually very connected or very much affected women and marginalized well-being. And somehow the one who made all of those law are men. Um, no hard feeling for men. I, it's not that I, I don't hate men. I don't hate men, by the way. I only hate patriarchy, which a lot of men unfortunately believe in patriarchy. Um, I think the most important part is definitely showing solidarity with other marginalized groups and movements such as Papua, labor workers, indigenous groups, or eco-feminists, or those who are working in climate change and a lot of like labor or labor groups and all of that issue. So this is something that we have been, you know, trying so hard to kind of understand that when we're talking about feminism, when we're talking about social issue, it's very interlining with each other. So yeah, I think that's I think, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. If you have a question or a follow-up or anything else that you would like to ask, feel free to do so. I'm just going to give it back to Sophia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ka. What an amazing presentation she gave. It's an honor to have you here, Ka, and sharing your incredible knowledge about feminism history and also lightening us about feminism. Guys, let's give this woman another round of applause, guys. Okay, so for Q&A, is there any question to Kak Fufi? Oh, I saw that Elfria, Efli, F, sorry, your name is so hard. Elfria Danche. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Cece, che -che -che. you can ask directly to Kak Vivi. Okay, thank you so much for your very insightful presentation. Uh, I want to ask three questions, if I may. Uh, uh, only one question for one, one question. participant. I'm so sorry. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, just one. <laughs> Okay, I have to pick one. Okay, I will pick the my third question, which is is feminist advocating LGBTQ plus? Do you want to ask me all of the questions and then I can answer, or do you want me to answer it one by one? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. You're so generous. Okay, the first one is uh, is there any male feminist icon? Because all that you mentioned, uh, only women. Second, uh, this is very technical and medical, but I'm curious. What is non-binary? What are they, their genitals for non-binary? I'm just curious. And the third one that is feminist advocating LGBTQ+. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so can I answer now or should we wait for other people to ask questions, Sophia? Okay, Ka, you can directly answer Ka Cheche. All right, okay. So let's just putting this in a very, I don't know the simple way to explain non-binary because this is also something that I asked, that I was asked in the previous um, you know, training because somebody asked about what happened in Unhas about the non-binary part. Um, in terms of genitals, I don't know because I have never seen anyone any non-binary genital. It this is also something that I felt that requires a lot of explanations in terms of gender identity, gender expression, you know, like all of that spectrums. But let me put it this way. When you were born, you are somehow assigned to a certain gender because of your genitals, right? But we, especially me, looking at gender as a social construct. That's how I see it. Because usually when you are assigned, if you, are a, if you have a penis, you will be assigned as a man, which means men or, you know, like lucky lucky has its own gender role gender expectation that is being attached to that identity. 
It means that you have to be mas masculine. It means that you cannot cry. It means that you can only wear certain colors of when you were, you know, like clothing. It means that you have to be tough. It means that you cannot be emotional in terms of, you know, have, have a soft feeling and all of that stuff. And it goes the same way with you if you were born with vagina or uterus that you will immediately assign by other people that you are a woman, which means you have, there will be a gender role that is being attached to you, a gender expectation, gender norms, and all of that, which means it means that you have to be submissive. You have to be, you know, like very self-spoken. You cannot challenge people. You just have to endure. You just have to say yes to everything. You have to be able to cook and all of that stuff, right? But, when it comes to gender non-binary, or for example, like when it comes to that kind of identity when you are being assigned to, some individual like me, I don't have a problem when I have a vagina and uterus, and then they assign me as a woman because I feel like I am a woman, right? But it does not mean that I will obey to that certain gender norms that they are being attached to me because I'm a woman. There are also other people who are you know, like happy with having a penis and being assigned as gender male or like not male, uh, men, right? They don't have an issue with that. But there are some other people who felt that they don't belong as a woman or as a man. So when you're talking about spectrum, I don't know like whether you've seen my hand here, there is men and there is women. And non-binary is right in the middle because they don't feel this way or they don't feel that way. I know it's confusing, but that's basically how, you know, you see it, right? Because like when they say like, you're a man, it's not them who said that they are a man, but somebody else or maybe the doctor who say like, oh, he has a penis, it means he's a man, right? But some non-binary people, most of the time, they don't feel that way. And it could be, and it also has nothing to do on how they express their way. For example, there's a lot of misconceptions. If there is a man who express themselves in such feminine way, it means that they are gay. Or for example, if there is a man who likes pink, they don't have to be feminine, they just like pink. They just prefer to wear orange, like bright orange. And this is like, why are you so gay wearing orange? But it's just, they just like it. It has nothing to do with their sexual orientation. It has nothing to do with how they identify their gender. And it's just colors. Why would you put gender on colors, right? So this is basically how we see that kind of spectrum. I think one of the things that you, I mean, like, I know that this is, this definitely couldn't explain the whole thing of what is, you know, gender spectrum. Like, you can definitely learn more about it in another session. Especially uh, right now, we are actually launching this thing called Feminist Hub, which allow people to learn about many issues in terms of feminism, which mean leads to your next question, uh, is feminist advocate for LGBTIQ? What we advocate is actually everybody has the rights of being themselves, including not being discriminated just because they are gay. You know what I mean? Do, like a lot of people, when they see someone who is lesbian, who someone is gay, who someone is bisexual, someone is transgender, or someone is queer, they immediately think that they deserve to die, but they have the rights to live, they have the rights to education, they have all the right as a basic human rights, access to the basic human rights. So that's basically a lot what a lot of feminists are advocating. But I myself, I support LGBTIQ. I am an LGBTIQ ally, and I'm proud of it. Right. So, but I'm, I feel like, yeah, I think like that's how I basically kind of see it. And I think in Indonesia, this is, has always been a very sensitive issue when you are talking about LGBTIQ in Indonesia. But again, looking at how our culture and our history kind of, you know, like the one that I explained before, it has always been there, right? So this is, has nothing to do with Western value and everything. It has always been there. There are so many history, even during the kingdoms era, that this kind of thing is happening and it exists. But right now, I feel like a lot of people are more comfortable to be able to kind of show their true identity. And yeah, despite that, there is a lot of risk of discriminations, there are a lot of risk of criminalization, which is something that we are fighting against. And then the third question, which is, is there male feminist icon? 
I don't believe that, especially if you are cis, which means those who are comfortable being identified, those who are men, who, who those who have penis and comfortable being identified as men, which is we call it cis, men and heterosexual or straight men who can be a feminist. Because I feel like they don't understand or they don't have the experience the way that we as a woman experience life because feminism is about you know that life experience of being oppressed that life experience of being discriminated so if you have all of the privilege living in a patriarchal world and then you are trying to kind of understanding how it feels to be a woman i think it's quite hard i think it's quite impossible actually because you don't have the experience but I do believe there is male feminist ally. So they don't necessarily a feminist, but they support feminist movement. So that's how I see it. So I don't hate men, no. <laughs> um, again, like what I hate is the patriarchy itself. What I hate is the way that a lot of men think that what we are doing is actually trying to get rid of men. No, what we are doing is we know that there are so many things that a lot of this men who has a lot of privilege as lives in the patriarchy world who are already advanced in so much in like a very high level and we're just trying to catch up. So that's what we are trying to do. We're just having trying to have an equal way. And the way that I see it, actually, when you're talking about gender equality, when you're talking about feminism, it actually also benefit men. In such patriarchal world, it is very hard for men to come up as they are a sexual violence victim. Because a lot of people think that men likes to have sex. There is no way that men will say no to sex. Men can fight for it. Men will use violence to fight for it. But that's not that simple. So with feminism, with gender equality, we are trying to tell everyone that you can express yourself, that you can be emotional, you can be sad, you can cry, you can complain about how tiring life is, whether you're men or women or anywhere in between. So if you are talking about that also issue in terms of men, there's a very high, so the level of men who committed suicide because of depress, depression is much, much higher than women because men like to bottle it up. They don't like to show that they are stressed because of how patriarchal work working on their mindset, setting their mindset. He said that you're men, this is your responsibility. You cannot complain, you cannot be sad, you cannot be cry. And then a lot of them actually led to violence as well. That is why there's a lot of violence against women, right? There's also like another issue of it. So that's how I see it in terms of male feminists. I don't see that as if you are a chest straight man, it is going to be hard for you to understand how we women and other marginalized group live in such a patriarchal world. But definitely, I've seen a lot of male allies one of the things is my hero, Chris Evans, <laughs> Captain America. That's a very good example of feminist ally. It just come out of, it's always in my mind. He lives in my mind rent free, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, like, that's one of the examples that I think. <laughs> I mean, like, there's also other, I believe there are so many other icons in Indonesia as well. But right now, I don't have it on top of my mind. I know I have a lot of friends who are feminist ally. For example, there is actually this organization in Indonesia called Aliansi Laki Laki Baru or New Male Alliance who are actually trying to teach men why feminism is actually good for men. So this is also something that, you know, like you can definitely research on it. And if you want to get to know more, I will really recommend you to kind of sign up for our launching. Um, it's I'll, I'll ask it to the group right now because we have a launching on Friday, but it's in Jakarta. So I don't know whether you're there or not. But yeah, but yeah, I hope that answers your questions. I know it's a lot. Okay, thank you, Ka Pipi. Is it answering your question, Ka Cece? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, I'm so sorry due to our limited time and I'm sure you are all looking forward to today's FGD session. And today our Zoom host will divide you into several breakout rooms and also like taking a picture together. So uh, are you uh, Amanda? 
or or Beth? Beverly, yes, I'm here. Okay, yeah. All right, so it's time to click some pictures. If you are able to open your camera, please open it because we are going to click some pictures here. All right, we'll have two pages and the first one, please keep smiling. One, two, three, cheers. All right, hold on. Wait a minute and the last page, second page. One, two, three, cheers. All right, that's great. Back to you, Sophia. Okay, thank you, Beth, for taking our picture. Okay, and then you in the breakout rooms, you will be accompanied by our competent facilitator, and they are here. So you will have approximately 20 minutes for a discussion. Have a fun, have fun with your discussion, guys. See ya. Dewi, aku harus di sini nggak ya? Or can I go? Is that okay? Oh, okay. it's it's okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Great. I still have another meeting. It's oh, okay. It's okay. Hey. It's okay. Thank you for Thank being you so here. Much, Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Kak, for sharing your insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, it's such a it's Thank a you. very nice well, well, feminism. Oh, thank you, Kak. It's, it's it's hard to kind of able to kind of discuss it in like a very short time. So I really I'm gonna send you a link in terms of where they can learn more. Um, like they can do it by themselves. Like it's an online mm -hmm. thing that is in Bahasa Indonesia, so it's going to be probably easier for them to understand. So yeah, and especially in terms of so the the LGBTIQ thing, the gender expressions and all of that. Yeah, usually we have like a specific session. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So about that. So yeah, it's, I it's think like it's there's a very yeah, there's a lot of people. Explaining. All right. That. Again, thank you, Kak. Kak. All right, thank you, Kak. Kak. Thank you, Kak. Good luck. Kak. See you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Fi. Okay, so we are all here. So, should we discuss about our FG? Yes, I guess. Okay. So, number uh, first question. What do you think about feminism? What do you think, guys? Who wants to talk first? Maybe Bev or Kakoko or maybe Manda or Dika or okay, me? Uh, okay, uh, let me uh, try my, myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think about feminism? Okay. Uh, I give you two perspectives here. Yeah. Uh, for the first time, is the feminism by most of people perspectives yeah because uh by the most of people's perspective about feminism is yeah uh women over men yeah and that's the the the, the common common perspective around people because uh, during feminism yeah yeah sorry to say uh women should be over men yeah, but uh, for the concrete uh, concrete definition about feminism, it's not like that, yeah. Because the feminism itself, it's actually the empowerment for the women or maybe for more general term is the em emancipation, the women empowerment or yeah, uh, gender equality. Uh, it makes more sense, yeah, because it doesn't mean that uh, women should be over men. Because uh, if you know, in some holy books, in rel some religions, that Eve or Hawa it was made of Adam's rib. So, yeah, why rib? Why not head or even leg? Because women and men are equal or should be equal not 
uh, over even though uh, in real world the treatment for men and women cannot be the same but they are actually equal that's from me yes Dika yeah I agree I couldn't agree more with you at first like yeah there's a lot of like negative perspective about feminism and and especially like in our country that yeah feminism means that women uh strive for their uh, strive for their power and etc but uh, after after I heard about our uh, from our conductor today, and then I know that feminism is not like that. And yeah, I think it's quite simply like feminism is all about all genders having equal rights and also opportunities. Like it's all about respecting the diverse of women's experiences identities, knowledge, strengths, and also like striving to empower all women and men to realize their full rights. Thank you, Dika, for sharing. What about you? Maybe Kak Koko or Beth or Amanda? What do you think about feminism? First. Yeah, sure, sure, Kak Koko. You are all you know, like smiling. Men, ladies, <laughs> gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's fair because the topic is feminism. Yeah. Like <laughs> Just trying to be a fair coincidence here. too. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Maybe Manda or Beth want to go first? Uh. If you want to go for it, since yeah, you can go for it. Okay. Okay then. So, so actually, uh, when when uh, when we come to the definition of feminism, I think I'm. It's it's a bit uh, a daunting uh, task yeah, to define what is it. Maybe we're we're more. Uh, familiar with the term of women emancipation. So with that term, we will remember R.A. Kartini, etc. Sorry. It's okay, guys. It's okay. Are okay. you buying something? <laughs> no? <laughs> See, because he has a nice big gun. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? okay now? Yeah, let's continue. Okay. okay. Yes. So, so I think I I I feel a bit eased when 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 using the term of women emancipation. So I I will remember someone which is Akartini. Uh, I I know in especially in Indonesia, especially in the East, where actually women are. Uh, being treated as like uh, lower than men uh, following the traditions. Uh, I think uh, the topic of feminism or women emancipation, I think it's a very good, uh, very good topic to talk about nowadays. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Uh, yes, like it's, uh, it's also a trending and yeah, we remember Era Hartini a lot until now. Yeah, that's right. Like the woman, maybe it's like a symbol. No, uh, like a famous person behind the woman in emancipation. Yeah, that's right. So what about you? What do you think about feminism? All the girls here? Haven't talked like Beth, Amanda. All right. What do you mean? Um. Okay. Let me take my turn first, and then going to Amanda. Okay. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um. For the first time, I thought that feminism uh was talking about something that tried to fight about something, but 
um, at the end, I think that it's going to talk about women who would like to fight about equality. I mean, like gender equality and opportunity. So um, there is no difference that women would be appreciated more or even like the same way as men. So uh, this is what I was thinking about feminism. Okay, maybe Amanda. Okay, sorry because I'm using two devices. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking at the my laptop, yeah. Uh, so I don't look at my phone. So sorry. Um, okay, about feminism. Uh, well, today's topic is really interesting, but at the same time, it's it's quite it's kind of uh, challenging and also complicated. For me, I, I mostly agree with all of what you have said before, especially uh, there are two perspectives about feminism that I agree and disagree with. Um, Yes, I totally uh, appreciate the efforts of feminist uh, advocates and also activists who defend the emancipation of women, like they fight for the equality between men and women. I totally agree with this because uh, women and men both have the same capacity and capability. Um, and also uh, uh, feminist activists uh, try to empower women, like what Ka, uh, and India, Ka Fifi mentioned earlier about Mama Aleta, a woman from Nusa Tenggara. I actually had uh, attended one of Mama Aleta's sem seminars and she uh, promoted equality of women and also the fighting for the rights of land in uh, Nusa Tenggara Timur. And I really adore Mama Aleta's spirit as a woman and how she uh, tries to empower her surroundings. Uh, that's why uh, that's one of the aspects that I agree with uh, feminism. Uh, and also feminist uh, activists, they support women and they define women from sexual harassment. That's the other thing that I agree with from feminism. Uh, aside of that, probably there are some aspects that I disagree with from feminism, which are based on my religious uh, beliefs. So yeah, I think there are two contradictory aspects of feminism that I support and I uh, disagree with. So that's from my perspective. What about you guys? <laughs> yeah, that's from me. I think back so to actually, Sophia. Actually, I want to ask you questions to all of the ladies. Yes, uh, I I know I know the uh, the world is now very modern, and uh, I think women emancipation. I think it has been like discussed like. Uh, since years ago but I, nowadays i rarely heard about this topic because i think uh do do you think that uh uh women get this still get discrimination nowadays this is question for ladies do you still feel being discriminated sometimes Amanda, would you like to answer first uh, for me personally, I have never been discriminated at work. Uh, but right now, since I work uh, as an independent teacher, it means I don't go to the office. So I don't really know how's the current situation. But back then, when I worked at the radio station, I didn't have any, I didn't get any discrimination, luckily, in terms of my uh, capability. They don't differentiate, they didn't differentiate me and man in terms of my uh, uh, skills. But uh, probably I got, probably got uh, assaulted by some verbal comments like some that's some something that led to you know like uh assault so i felt that it, it's it's from my experience guy i didn't get an experience but maybe some negative comments about my appearance that's what i experienced you're so being attacked as a woman yes uh due to my appearance probably and also some verbal comments that i that i didn't that I didn't like, what do you call it? <laughs> How about Dev and uh, Sophia? Thank you, Manda. Um, for me, uh, it's 
honestly, it's pretty tough to recall or even like to to make me realize about my condition or even uh, other women around me. But I haven't been feeling discriminated because of my gender. Even though I've been working in automotive industry, but maybe when uh, when we like we know about the responsibility, maybe uh, that suits to women or even men. So uh, this is just only the concern, the only left concern for people in in our country. But I think that's fair. Thank you, Bev. How about Debbie? Uh, me, same, uh, same like Amanda. I've never got like a tag, like maybe like, yeah, uh, how to say? Or, or being discriminated. Yeah, like har harassment or something like that, like physically. But yeah, uh, verbally, I, I, I like I experience that like yeah maybe be uh, yeah so, uh because of my appearance and yeah like they the prot patriarchy as we know that uh a lot of men thinks that they are over women and women are a second class and something like that so maybe that's why. And then, uh, yeah, uh, like Fifi already said that a lot of men like distress and they like, like maybe like channeling their, their, their depression into something like violence to something. But uh, for me, I just like because it's like it's just a uh, verbal like verbal abuse. Uh, I I didn't take it, I didn't take it personally. But I saw a lot of effort. Uh, I mean, no, not advertising, but a lot of in the article like sexual harassment is also like domestic violence becoming a domestic violence and yeah after I heard that like a lot of women still still in that situation so yeah because I'm a woman so yeah I guess I can see that that is why like feminism is happening wow it's I, I think it's very good to listen to to ladies uh, their opinion whether they're still get, getting uh, discrimination nowadays but from your testimonials that nowadays uh, more, uh, gender equality is like uh, something we experience everywhere at the office uh, uh, at home like uh, people, people do not see human as men or women anymore. It's like, yes, we ju just human, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. So, like, gender equality is really like, yeah, gender and feminism is different, but like a lot of people still think that gender and feminism is the same. <laughs> But turns out it's not <laughs> okay. So let's move on, yes. guys, to the second question. Is it okay? Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So do you think like feminism in Indonesia is important? And why do you think so? Who else wants to answer first? Maybe Beth? All right, or... sure. Oh, okay. I'm going yeah. to answer the first. Uh, so um, I reckon not only in Indonesia, but also in other countries, because this is one of the social issue that every country will be having, or not will be having, mm -hmm. but has been having. Because um, 
Even though I haven't been feeling like discriminated because of my gender, but I often listened uh, to discrimination that already happened, not only in Indonesia, but also in other countries. For example, the most common thing about uh, when we, we not wear, but uh, do you still remember the last tragedy that already happened in the train? Uh -huh. Yes, so anything God. like physical harassment. Uh, yeah, and I think this is a massive reason why I say that it's still important to take care of our uh, gender equality and also about fem feminism. Thanks, Kabeh. <laughs> we have Hi. 30 seconds. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 30 seconds left only, guys. That's All a great right. conversation. Thank you so much, guys, yeah, for your is, for is, your insight. Amazing, right? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you it's for the discussion, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> and then all of us is talking about what is happening now, like what is trending now, women in in immense or feminism wow. <laughs> okay so i'm gonna close the screen because some of the participants have gotten back to the main room hello guys welcome back hello hello, hello. welcome guys welcome, welcome back. back okay how is your fgd going guys it's so amazing. Can I'll we have it. another extra okay. time? <laughs> For the visual, we need more time. <laughs> yeah. So could you please give us a thumbs up if you if your discussion was acting, guys? Okay, thank you. Wow. I'm looking forward to hear your group's history. Uh not history i'm sorry story <laughs> so and i'm sure the rest of us are as well so let us hear from a representative of ice group thank you hello hello i are you yeah. there hello, yeah okay yes, i'm here sorry okay okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah yeah, I will. So is I will. your representative? Yeah, I have my first representative for my FPD sessions, and I have Kafahra because she is a first timer in Big Zone, and I let her to be our representative in our FPD sessions. So, Kafahra, that's your time. <laughs> Uh, all right. Good night, everyone. My name is Fahra Malika Fazasia, and I will present you about the topic that I was just discussing with my friends in a breakout room about feminism. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, what we think about feminism is, um, actually feminism is, uh, But um, I mean, it's it's not really that good, but it's not that bad because there are some uh, principles uh, that is occurs in feminism uh, that we are agree with, and we think uh, they are ideal. But there are also uh, principles in feminism that. We think uh, it is not ideal idealist enough, and um, so do we think that feminism is important in Indonesia? Um, I think feminism is. We think feminism is not really important in Indonesia because the um, the rights that feminism um, feminism offers to us has already uh, covered by our by our human rights by Indonesia's human rights and also um, 
about the last question. Uh, what do we think uh, the feminism will be in the future in Indonesia? Um, okay, I think um, actually future is something uh, that is blurry that we cannot determine. So maybe maybe there is 50% or or whatever possibility that um about feminism in a future so i think that's all okay thank you Ka uh thank you fahra for sharing okay and then welcome to great zone so give it up for fahra guys Thank you for your bravery, Fahra. Okay, now, thank you for also sharing your thoughts, your opinion in uh, in our breakout rooms. Okay, so let's proceed to the next representative, Yin. Hello, Yin. Are you there? Hi, Ka Sophia. Can, Hello. can you hear my voice clearly? Yeah, sure. Who is your okay. representative? Okay, in my group there is like only one members. Um, Kak Melani. Hello, Kak Melani, are you there? Hello. Okay, so she is actually first timer on Bridgeon, and we really have um a good discussion, and he willing to. Speak speaking in English only. So I welcome you, Kak Melanie. The time is yours, Kak. Thank you, Kak Yiying. Thank you. Okay, Kak Melanie, could you please give your opinion about our discussion? Kak, aku lagi nggak bisa nih. Lagi, lagi sambil ngoding, so. Oh, okay, so um, because we only have one member, um, Kak Sofia, could you please to pick another one to being a representative? Okay, thank you, Yin, and thank okay. you, for, thank you for being here, also, Melanie, for being here, and also thank you for sharing your opinion and thoughts in the our breakout room that was an intimate discussion you are having right with Yi Yin. okay so the next representative will be from Raihan are you there Raihan yeah I'm here Kak Sofia okay. who is your representative Okay, I will choose Ka Raki. It's your turn. Can you share your opinion about this topic? All right. Thank you so much, Raihan. So, hello, my fellow Bridgezoners. I'm Raki. I am a, I am a supporter of a house husband, not housewife, but house husband. <laughs> seems seems tonight we talking about feminism. So I'm proud. I am a supporter of house husband. All right, let's move on to the questions. What do you think about feminism? In my humble opinion, opinion, feminism is about is about uh, supporting supporting movement from woman to woman because I always heard the slogan. Maybe all of you guys will know it about a uh, woman support support woman, right? So many so many dead things in our daily life. And then, do you think feminism is in Indonesia is important? And then why? I think yes, it's really really important because because. As a as a human creature, as a hum, as a social creature, I mean, we all of us here really really need a support system, right? So feminism is a part of the support system. 
pick again it is my humble opinion and then why yes because everyone should be supported by everyone so we are as human can be better and better together not only individual and then the last about what do you think about Indonesia feminism in the future? I think in the future, femini feminism in Indonesia will, will be well known to everyone because I just realized that uh, maybe a couple months ago, if I don't mistaken, there's a stand up stand up comedy special show which talking about feminism but the unique the uniqueness is the point of view came from the men so i guess feminism is not always it's not only about a woman thing right now but men also talking about that so i think in the future yes everyone in indonesia will well known about feminism i think that's all thank you so much back to you mc Okay, thank you, Raki, for wow, that's a great thought. Okay, so comes from our competent like committee in Brazil. <laughs> okay, thank you for also being here, also, Raki. Okay, so the next group will be from Dennis. Are you here, Dennis? Yes, I'm here, Sophia. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, Let's hear from your representative. So, yeah, there are three uh, people in my group, uh, Dian, Arif, and Ami. So I'm going to call Dian because I think he's been talking about feminism very well. Thank you. Dian, are you here? Uh, I was actually saying, why me? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So we were having an open conversation in the breakout room instead of sticking to the questions. And this is what I think about feminism. I'm a feminist. Uh, I think of myself as a feminist because uh, feminism uh, isn't only concerned about women, but all genders. So if you see that everybody is equal, no matter what they are, whether they are men or women or non-binary or even LGBTQ, then you are a feminist. And I, I do believe that everybody must be given every opportunity in the society without any distinction. So that's why I, I, I do promote uh, feminisms and I right now I live in a society in in a country where sexuality is so fluid. There are no limitations and boundaries when it comes to how you present yourself in the society. And um, that makes me think, uh, it caught me thinking that, uh, you know, I, I don't know, but this is just my personal opinion. Indonesia is still way far behind uh, this country when it comes to this issue. I mean, um, when we discriminate somebody, we tend to limit their opportunities and also their basic rights. And you've seen so many cases in Indonesia where some people from minor groups they got deprived of their basic rights. Either it's their jobs, is there it's their education, and uh, that happens. So uh, that's what I think about feminism. And um, do you think feminism in Indonesia is important? Yes. Why? Because I, I grew up in a family where we have this kind of mentality. You know, if you're a woman, one day you're going to end up being somebody else's wife. So you don't have a higher education, you know, like high school is enough for you because, you know, all you're going to do later is just cook and then to clean and to take care of the house and the babies. Uh, 
well, it, it, <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but this happens. And, and I mean, um, and back at home, there, there are some people who grew up with this kind of mentality and toxic masculinity. And also the thing is one thing that I want to say here that, uh, you know, to say that yourself is a feminist doesn't make you less masculine if you are a man. Because, uh, again, feminism, it's not only concerned about m women, but also all genders in general. So this is like an umbrella term for this issue. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Also, uh, comes from uh, our loyal member in Brazil. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. And yeah, unfortunately, our conductor uh, has another activity, has another meeting. So there will be no closing statement for, for from her but actually you can uh, you can ask to her so just i will send in the in the chat box uh, you can ask or contact her to be delighted if you ask it's an india pp okay so can we is it already all right, right? Okay, so yeah. And I hope uh, we can gain and yeah, apply sharing knowledge as soon as possible. And then it will be beneficial to us in the future. And thank you to all prisoners for taking time out of your busy schedule and to spend with us in the class and i hope to see you again in the next bird zone classes everyone remember to sign up for our class tomorrow and also saturday goodbye and see you later have a nice day thank you kasopia for emceeing us bye bye thank you so much thank you Thank you on Wednesday, Kamilani, and everyone for coming here. Thank you, guys. Good night. Thank you, guys. On the Wednesday, all right? Bye-bye now. Bye, Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Alga. Bye. Thank you, Kasofia. Thank you. Thank you, Daud. Thank you.